All right, thanks for watching. And today will be seriously awesome because we'll talk about infinite series. A series uh, intuitively is just a sum of all the terms of a sequence. So let a n be a sequence. What would it mean to take the sum of all the values of a n? So we would like to define the sum from 1 to infinity of a n, which is a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus dot dot dot. Which is a problem because so far we only define finite sums, but we don't really know what an infinite sum is. But not a problem at all because we know what limits are. And intuitively, a series is just a very large sum. Think a1 plus a2 plus a3 up to, let's say, a a million. And in order to make this precise, we need to define what are called partial sums, which I'll do now with an example. So, for instance, example, what would it mean? What does it mean for the following series to be 1? For the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 half to the n, which is just 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus dot dot dot, what would it mean to be 1? And in another video we'll actually prove uh, that it is 1. And so in particular, the way really to define that this is 1 is by looking by what are called the partial sums. So let S1 be the first term, A1, which here is 1 half, let's say 0 0.5. So S1 is the sum of the first term. S2 is the sum of the first two terms. So S2, that's A1 plus A2 which is one half plus one quarter. So three quarters, think 0 0.75. S3, it's the sum of the first three terms. So A1 plus A2 plus A3, which I believe is 0 0.875. And then S4 is the sum of the first four terms plus a4, which I believe is roughly 0 point, actually exactly, 0 0.9375. And then you can continue. You can take the sum of the first five terms, which is roughly 0 0.967, and for instance, s6, which is 0 0.984. And in fact, even better, we can take S7, which is roughly 0 0.992. So again, uh, S1 is just the first term. S2 is the sum of the first two terms. S3 is the first sum of the first three terms. S4 is the sum of the first four terms, five terms, six terms, seven terms, etc., etc. But Series is not about getting crazy with sums. Well, it kind of is, but in a sane way, in some sense, kind of uh, lawful, chaotic. But more interestingly is, notice there's something special about those partial sums. 0 0.5, 0 0.7875, 0 0.93, 0 0.96, 0 0.98. 0 0.99. Those partial sums, well, they actually seem to converge. They seem to go closer and closer to 1. So this is S1, S2, and generally Sn. So it actually seems that those larger and larger sums get closer and closer to 1. And in fact, that's how we define the series, the infinite series, simply to be the limit of those partial sums Sn. 
So to make this fully rigorous, so it seems that if you define uh, Sn to be A1 plus A2 plus da 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 plus An, so the nth partial sum, which you can just write as the sum from the first term to the nth term, of AK, so it depends on M, then SN converges to 1. SN converges to 1. And it's this thing that we define, that's the definition of the infinite series. So sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 half to the n. So all that the series is, is just a limit of partial sums. So let's make this, let's now give you a definition of a series. So definition, if, um, okay, uh, if a n is a sequence, And you let Sn to be, again, the partial sum, so the sum of the first n terms, then we say that the infinite series, sum from 1 to infinity of An equals capital S, if Sn goes to capital S. And in particular, we say the series converges if Sn goes to a finite number S. So definition, if S as above is finite, say again, think three or minus one, then the series converges, so series An converges, else if you get infinity or minus infinity or the limit doesn't exist, then the series diverges. So else, again, if S equals plus or minus infinity or the limit does not exist, then the series diverges. I know it seems weird to deal with those partial sums, so let's give me, let me give you another example of a, a convergent series. For instance, consider the following thing. The sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1. Let's find the value of that series, if it exists. And if you want, this is 1 over 1 times 2, plus 1 over 2 times 3, plus 1 over 3 times 4, etc., etc. Okay. In order to figure out what the value is, we have to look at the partial sums. So look at Sn, which is just the sum from k from 1, to n of your sequence. So 1 over k times k plus 1. And we have to put k here because k is the dummy variable here. Because we're summing from 1 up to n and we already used n. It's kind of like f of x dx when you integrate. This is the analog of this. Now, um, in order to do this, well, here let me give it to you, but in general you would have to use partial fractions, as in calculus. It turns out the term inside the sum 
it's nothing else, not, none other than 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. In fact, if you put it on a common denominator, it becomes k plus 1 minus k over that, which simplifies to 1 over k times k plus 1. And why is this awesome? Because this series has a very nice feature. So this becomes 1 minus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 quarter up to plus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And notice the beautiful thing about this series. A lot of the terms cancel out. So kind of the inside terms always cancel out. And you're left with the endpoints, 1 and minus 1 over n. So Sn, it's 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So again, this is the sequence of partial sums. It's this 1 half, 0 0.75, 0 0.875, etc., etc. And in particular, notice this thing, as n goes to infinity, actually converges. It goes to 1. And because the partial sums go to 1, we can say with confidence that the series is 1. So this is your capital S. Hence, the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1, it's capital S, which is 1. So you see, this is how to rigorously show the value of a series, calculate the partial sums, and then take a limit. All right, and we'll do another example like that in the next video, but just, just a couple of remarks. Well, ideally, we would need a good class or a good list of examples of convergent series. Luckily, there's a quintessential list, which is called the P-series. So, a uh, fact, and this will show later, P-series. Well, the sum from k from n from 1, from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n to the p uh, converges, so the value is finite, if and only if p is greater than 1. Because you're the 1, but I'm p, so p is greater than 1. Uh, <laughs> so for instance, again, how do you remember this? Just remember the, those two examples for instance, if you take for p equals 1, if you just take the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus dot dot dot, even though the terms are smaller and smaller, it turns out this thing is infinity. Because p is 1, which is not greater than 1, therefore it diverges. But if you take the sum of the following terms, sum from uh, 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, which is, it looks similar, but it's much slower, 1 plus 1 quarter plus 1 9 plus dot dot dot, that actually converges, and you can show it's uh, pi squared over 6. So here it converges, whereas here it diverges. Which shows you, by the way, something interesting about squares. There are so fewer squares than actual numbers that this series is infinity, but this sum is finite. Kind of interesting. Um, all right, so we have this. Last but not least, a little fact, maybe known from calculus, but the book doesn't talk about it, which is weird because it's so important. So fact... Namely, a series, so the sum of a n, converges if and only if it is bounded. 
What does it mean? In calculus, you just write the series, but strictly speaking, it means the sequence of partial sums. Oh, okay. Here's a fact. So suppose the, and that only works if all the terms are positive. So if a n is non-negative for all n, then the series of a n converges if and only if it is bounded. What does it mean? In calculus, you just say the series, but strictly speaking, it means the sequence of partial sums. So Sn is bounded. And why is that true? Super quick proof. Luckily, it just follows from our definitions. Because look, remember what our sequence was, Sn. Right? It started with 0 0.5 then 0 0.875, 0 875, etc., etc. Notice that Sn is actually increasing. And why? Because we're just adding not more and more non-negative terms. So notice Sn is at least non-decreasing. So now here comes a proof. Well, if Sn is bounded, Well, what do we have? We have an increasing sequence that is bounded. So by the monotone sequence theorem, it must converge. So by MST, SN must converge to some capital S, which means by definition that the series must converge to S. So the series converges and uh, conversely, well, if Sn is not bounded, it means this is decreasing, but really gets bigger and bigger, kind of like that. Well, then the only way it could happen is if Sn goes to infinity. So then you can show Sn goes to infinity, so the series of An goes to infinity, and therefore it diverges, and then we're done. All right, that's all, uh, all good, but um, of course you would like to have some easier tests for convergence, and that's the point of the next series of videos, no pun intended. All right, thank you very much.